We'll now work on pulling some search results back from Algolia within our search box on our documentation site. To show you what I'm going to refer to, this is the Algolia docs section, algolia.com forward slash docs. And we're going to be working with their view instant search components. You could check out a showcase of some of the widgets that they have. And the one that we're going to be working with is autocomplete. In our search.view component, we already added the AIS instant search. And this needs to wrap all the different components that you use for view instant search. And I've already have some starter code to paste right in between. All right, let's go through these. So the first child is this AIS configure. And what we'll put into this is some configurations for our search results. One of the things that we're going to show is the body plain text. I don't want to show the full body plain text, but what I want to show is just a snippet of that text. So let's actually just add that in right now. And this, you put attributes. to snip it and what we want to snip it as I said before is the body plain text because I do not want the whole thing to show up in the search results and we'll need to put this within single quotes while I'm here another configuration I want to set is how many search results I show so for that we'll type hits per page dot camel and I want to show just five search results okay let's take a look at this next section the autocomplete is what I just showed in the Algolia docs this one is basically just a search bar you start typing and then it autocompletes some search results for you and then within that what we're doing is we're defining that input box and we're doing that within the scope of current refinement and disease refine. So this is pretty standard. You probably just keep that the same. And then what we're doing within this div, this is the dropdown portion of the search results. So we have the input on top. And if we start typing in that, what we want to show is the dropdown. And then that dropdown is going to contain the results of the search query that we're typing in. So this is the dropdown and we're basically styling that. So at the very top, we probably don't want to show the dropdown until there's actually something put within the search indexes. For this first div, we could do a v if or a v show and set that equals to current refinement dot length. So if the current refinement is going to be the current results that are brought back from the query data that's currently being inputted into the input box. So if this has some results, we're going to show the dropdown, in other words. And what we start to see within this div right here is the search results that are coming back, we're basically gonna loop through those. We're gonna loop through this each section in the indices and we're gonna display that to the user. And I'm gonna clean this up a little bit too. I just took this from our docs.cleaver site and I don't think this bit is gonna be applicable to what we're doing. We will create a next link so we can link to that page, but I'm just gonna hide that for now. And then scrolling down, these are the results top result here is the title for that page and then below that is the body plain text. So to show you what this all should look like in the end, let's go to docs.cleaver.io. In this search, if I click into it or do command K and start typing, what we see is the title that shows up in this blue font and the body plain text that shows up right below that in the white font with the ellipses. And as I mentioned later on, we'll add some keyboard controls. That way, if I do the down arrow, it goes down the results, and the up arrow goes up on the results. And if I click on Enter, that's going to go to that page. All right, let's go back to our code. And of course, I have this AIS powered by theme equals dark. Uh, this is basically the icon that shows up for Algolia. If you're using their free tier, they ask that you enter this here. So I just have that entered for you. Well, of course, I have a typo there. That should be search client with an IENT instead of a UENT. All right, let's fix that. Now, let's go to our input section. So, so far, we have the input search. We have a reference set for the input that eventually we'll use for some of our keyboard commands. And then we have a class. But we're not really telling Algolia to do anything with that. Okay, let's add some of the expected properties that Algolia is going to expect to this input box. First one is to set the value. 
and the value is going to be current refinement. And then we need to handle what happens when a user starts to add input into the input text box. For that, we'll type add input, and then set that equal to refine, and then in parentheses, dollar sign event dot current target dot value. And we'll also set autocomplete to be off. And this is more so for our browser. We don't want our browser to start suggesting stuff to go into the input box. And well, there's probably some of that Nux link stuff I should have kept, like the two, and also a way to iterate between the hits. And oops, found another typo, so body plane text, not test. All right, let's save that, and let's see our progress. All right, what we expect is when we click on this input box and start typing something, we'll see a dropdown come up with the search results in that. Let's give that a try. Cool. All right. We see right here the results. I mean, we only have two pages, so we're not going to get a ton of results, but we do see what we want. We see the title of the page show up here on the very top. And then below that, we see body plain text that is snippeted. So it just shows about 10 words, I think. And then we see a highlight of what the query search criteria that we're putting in is. So far, so good.